and there's volatility going over here in the market, I guarantee you the person that has zero cash in all investments is much more concerned about what's happening in the market than the person with an emergency fund who has a plan, who contributes every month to their retirement accounts or wealth building accounts or whatever, that long-term money that we're talking about. One one person, their blood pressure and pulse is going to be way up here. The other is this is all a part of the plan. Welcome to Money Therapy. <laughs> we're back, baby. All right. What's up, Bill? What's up, Bill McGill? What's going on, man? How are you? Not bad. I'm Brandon Chastine. We're going to talk today. Hopefully, you have listened to a lot of Money Therapy. If this is your first episode, um, Definitely want to encourage you to click, you know, thumbs up, five star, all that good stuff. But mostly we want you to subscribe and listen to our other stuff because what we're trying to do in money therapy is put stuff out there um, that will help you learn about yourself. We want you to master money and not let money be your master. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're trying to get you to think about who you are and um, when we are self-aware. And we, when we know who we are, sometimes it can empower us to make healthy decisions for ourselves. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the fundamentals of everything that we do. What, what can we bring to the table today and, and share with you guys that makes you think, makes you slow down, makes you realize a little bit about yourself, um, who we are instinctually and who we should be um, for for the better of, of our future. So with that... Um, Bill, did I miss anything on that? What's what's your thoughts? Why why do we do money therapy? Well, I like to think that <clears throat> what we try and do with this show is kind of cut through all the noise and be kind of the voice of reason. So, you know, we we understand that the media and a lot of other, you know, basically kind of the internet in general is, you know, very geared towards getting your attention, keeping your attention. Um, a lot of times they exaggerate a lot of different things. Uh, they make, they can make you feel like whatever's happening in the economy today is like never happened before. This is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and most of the time that's not the case. Most of the time we've seen it a hundred times before. And it, you know, oftentimes is a perfectly healthy, you know, market. Um, we did had, you, uh, did you do but, this on purpose just to segue perfectly into what we're going to talk about today? Sorry, I didn't I just, you off. I think I'm just fantastic at segueing. Like I, the scooter? I mean, is, that, is that a segue? The scooter. Yeah, the little like uh, mall cop Maybe. thing. Oh. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just <laughs> talking about being a podcast genius. But, uh, you know. All right. Well, I did... Cut you off. I didn't mean to. Did you have anything to finish? You were you just. Did. I was on a stream of consciousness. I know man. you I were. Was, you don't was, even know where I you was were. Hon I was honing in, man. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, just for us to cut through the noise so that you can kind of sit back, relax, let the blood pressure and the pulse die down just a little bit, and go. Okay, you know, this is a perfectly normal thing. We've done podcasts in the in the past where you know labeled volatility is normal because again they you know oh how volatile has it been over the last you know so on and so forth well yeah. you know we spent how a lot of waves time are in the ocean yeah we discussed how like when the ocean is calm that's a weird time right that's right. the actual weird time the volatility is completely normal so um i think that's what you know what we're trying to talk about today is is sort of that we're going to focus a little bit more around inflation it's sort of the topic of the day but um yeah, just trying to be that kind of that grounding um, rod, if you will, uh, for for the average person who's just trying to control what they can control. Yeah. So we got I got an email today. So, so there's two. What I want to do is and, and this is something I've been communicating with my clients, um, but I, I just want to put it out there because where we're at right now um, is is the economy is doing well. And it's kind of surprising how well, by any measure and metric, the economy is doing because of what the Federal Reserve and what you know policy is having to do because of inflation. And and we kind of just been we've been waiting for so long for you know the the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. Yeah. And that just doesn't get the, the camel just keeps getting stronger, and we're yeah. kind of all surprised. And and the market has responded. In a great way, 
going kind of higher and higher. And when, as we're recording this now, the S and P 500 is effectively at all time highs. Um, yeah. And, and so it's kind of the, the question. And then, and you know, there's a lot of conversation about like being in the new bull market. Um, how long does it last and all this other stuff? Well, the, as this week, while again, while we're recording at the, the week that we're recording, there's been two economic reports that have come out and both of them were slightly like not as expected. Right. And, 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 and again, to understand how all this works, it, they weren't bad reports, just the, all these analysts, these like, you know, future, they, they, they have the crystal balls in front of them and they want to predict the future. These analysts are like, Hey, we think that the report should say this when it comes out, nobody can predict the future. Right? right. We know this, but we still sometimes let our like brains believe. And then all of a sudden the report comes out and it's not exactly as predicted because again, there is no crystal ball. Um, but what happens? Well, what happens is the market, then all of a sudden like, Oh, it's not going to go as planned. Now this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, and you know, then there's a big, huge like all the like all the edges of the screens turn red, and you know everybody's doomsday prepping and all this right. other stuff. So this what we want to, yeah, we want to really put in perspective a couple things that I think are normal because I do, um, I would I, I anticipate the markets to act normally. I I don't know. What that means, it, I, I get what I, what it means is I don't know exactly what's going to happen or when, but I wouldn't be surprised if normal things occur this year. So let's yep. talk a few pieces. The first thing I want to talk about is the the normal cadence of big changes in in the market's direction, right? So the first the first thing that normally happens in a year is normally the market will go down about three to 5% about two or three times in a year. So again, this can happen in a day. This can happen over the course of a week or even a month, right? Sometimes the drops are very violent, really fast. Sometimes the drops are, you know, tenths of a percent over the course of a week or a month or weeks, whatever. Um, but this occurs typically two or three times a month. And the other thing that occurs is something a little bit more violent. Um, and that is it, the market typically will pull back from its high point about 10% once per year, almost once per year. Um, yeah. And in this 10% pullback, again, that can happen over the course of a few days. It can happen over the course of a few weeks. It can happen over the course of a couple months or a quarter. You just don't know when it's coming. And the other thing that people have to understand is you don't know when it's the 3%. You don't know when it's the 10%. And, you, and none of this, by me saying any of this, means it has to happen, right? It never has to happen. Right. You got blurry. You good? So, yeah, I, wa I, w I want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, it's something that is so normal. But the reality is, is first of all, again, it doesn't have to happen. We had we had a pullback the other day. The pullback was around, you know, I think, you know, across the three major indices, it was like we'll call it one and a half percent in a day. And it's like, oh, maybe this is the start of a three to five percent pullback. Maybe this is the start of a ten percent pullback. But guess what? The yeah. next day it was back. It was back up like one one and a quarter percent. And then yeah. the day after that, it was up with another quarter percent. Right? We recovered really quick. Yeah. Um, so you can't you can't have knee jerk reactions. And I think that's the whole point of this is yeah when all the media and when our own like gut is like oh this hurts like i don't want to lose two percent of my wealth today yeah like somehow we have to realize that sometimes just sitting still taking some deep breaths slowing our heart rate how 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 impactful being in control and not having those knee-jerk reactions, how how meaningful that can be for the long-term wealth building endeavors that we're on. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think um so I remember those two days and I I want to expand on my thoughts that I had during that time and because I think it'll help the listener. But um, you know, we talk about mindset almost every day on this podcast. And 
you know, you get to choose when something happens, right? You get to choose how you react to that. And that's a huge part of life is, you know, I get to control how I react to the things that happen in my life, right? So I think it's our jobs as financial advisors to train our clients and train, you know, try and coach the people that we're in contact with how to think differently and, and how to build that, you know, uh, that aspect of taking a step back and taking a breath and lowering the blood pressure and realizing that it's all not crumbling down to the ground and that this is normal. It's our job as financial advisors to train that. Um, so for instance, this last week, and again, I'm not perfect by any means. I go through a lot of emotion just like everybody else, but the thought, I think that my thoughts were pretty real pretty relevant when I saw that market come back about one and a half percent, depending on which index you're looking at. Sure. Um, for a half a second, I was like, oh man, you know, it, that's a significant pullback for a day. And, and and that's, I mean, on a scale of one to 10, it was like a two emotion, right? right. Like, I mean, right. it, it was just like, oh, I acknowledged it. Right. And mm -hmm. then I realized, and I thought back to all the, you know, and I said, well, you know what, what's funny about that is some of the best days in the market are immediately following the worst days in the market. Yeah. And that's why we coach so many people that when we're going through a recession or a major, uh, you know, pullback to stay in the market because some of the best days are coming. And so right. I had that thought of, I even had the thought of, man, maybe I should put a little bit money into the market today, you know? And, and again, the next day, you know, we had a really good day. I think it came back like almost a percent and the next day, a half a percent and then, you know, 0.3% yeah. or something the next day and recovered perfectly fine over the rest of the week. But that didn't have to happen. Like you were saying, it didn't have to right. happen. And the other thought that I had in the back of my head was, yeah, I really want to put money in, but it could go down again. Well, so I, I what think... would be the correct mindset from there that we try and coach, you know, from practicality is think about putting some money in. And then if it does keep coming down, Maybe, you know, look at it as a buying opportunity is kind of how we frame that. Um, yeah. But it was that I was never out of control with my emotions. It was just like, oh, this is happening. This happens on occasion. It happens quite a lot. Now we know what typically happens after that. So how am I going to respond? Am I going to, you know, if I have a million dollars and it went down almost 2%, I just lost $20,000 in a day, right? I don't think anybody would be happy about that. But then it's like, hey, you have a million dollars, like sit tight, let it recover. You know, don't make any crash, rash, you know, rash, like super quick decisions. So just to wrap up my little monologue here, um, you know, I think it's mainly our jobs to coach and, and to train our clients to do exactly how we kind of think based on the history of the market and things like that. I, I think the the important thing is, you know, when when you go through the process, when you go through the planning process, um, dollars have jobs, right? And if right. you in, if you are worried about the market going down today um, for tomorrow's money, that's a very real feeling. But I would argue that if you're worried about tomorrow's money, you shouldn't be putting those dollars in a volatile market. Yeah, I would, absolutely. I would be looking for so right. So so one of the catchy slogans that we've we've had a show about is is decades, not days. Um, yeah, we we are focused on long term. And if you think about the long term aspects of investing, um, generally speaking, I tell people like investments are meant, you know, at best for three years away. Uh, you need three years of, of, of you know, letting the, the stew kind of simmer, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but, but truth be told, like your chances of losing if you if you have if you make an investment doesn't even the, th the cool thing is it does not even matter. People are like, oh, is, you know. ABC company expensive today? Well, it depends. When are you trying to sell ABC company? Because if you're trying to sell it in two years, it could be. If you're trying to sell it in three years, less likely that it's expensive. If you're trying to sell it at seven years, it's almost never a, a, an L. You almost never take a loss if you hold an investment seven years. Um, so we really, really, really rest on this notion. It doesn't mean we're like passive and you know, don't care. And we're not, we're always doing homework. We're always trying to make the best decisions. And we'll call it if, if things happen before we think they're going to happen. So if the timeline's more, uh, you know, expedited, I've had assets where I'm like, Hey, if the price gets here, I'll sell. And it's probably going to take two or three years. Um, but then it takes two months. 
and we sell. Yeah. You know, so I think I think decades, not days is important. The other thing that I would say is understanding that there is a difference between having a process and making a decision and a an emotional reaction. Right. Yeah. And, and we're not saying that if something doesn't make sense anymore through analysis to just sit on it because you don't want to take your loss. Right. What we are saying is don't have an emotional reaction because of something today and because of news cycles and media cycles. As soon as these little reports came out, they weren't bad reports. Yeah. They just weren't what was expected. And so the market pulled back a little bit. And then all of a sudden, all the headlines were like inflation's coming back and all this other stuff. So yep. anyway, that's that. So the, the important takeaway is take a deep breath. Have a strategy, a plan or a process to evaluate. Is this still the right thing? Yep. And if it is still the right thing, sit on your hands and do nothing. If something of, of substance has changed and it's no longer the right thing, You've made the decision from an analytical standpoint, not an emotional standpoint. And I would always argue to have somebody in your corner that you can talk to because sometimes we can convince ourselves it's a good decision yeah. because of our emotions. And that's that was my other thought too, is we can do things with our clients as financial professionals that insulate people from some of those emotions um, and helps change the mentality. You know, So we, we think about, again, we talked about the mentality today of training and coaching our clients to have a certain mentality when these things happen. But also there are some practical things that we can do. For instance, you know, just having an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, which is something that we always recommend, you wouldn't put that emergency fund in a single stock, you know, or, or something that's super volatile if you may need it, you know, if your furnace goes out or you need a new roof. And what's not, or you lose your job or something, right? Because with the volatility, it could be worth significantly less. You don't necessarily have 10 years to ride it out if it's emergency fund savings. And what that emergency fund allows you to do is, yeah, if I have that money over here, that's, you know, in cash in a savings account or a money market or something like that, and there's volatility going over here in the market, I guarantee you the person that has zero cash in all investments is much more concerned about what's happening in the market than the person with an emergency fund who has a plan, who contributes every month to their retirement accounts or wealth building accounts or whatever, that long-term money that we're talking about. One, one person, their blood pressure and pulse is going to be way up here. The other is this is all part of the plan. And so I think what we're trying to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon, but have that coach in your corner to have that plan to change your mentality to be thinking about these times the correct way yeah i agree um and i think that the other piece to this coin um, and i'll i'll bring this home is like after we make this we talk about this but the 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 history of the markets right we can look at history as a guide doesn't mean it has to happen the same all the time and there's evidence that it doesn't happen the same all the time. But sometimes we can look and say, hey, this is normal, right? Three right. small pullbacks, two or three small pullbacks a year, three to 5%, and then one pretty decent one at 10%. We can talk about how bear market cycles happen every like three to five years. Um, and, and then we can talk about economic cycles of seven or eight years. Like we can talk about all this stuff, right? It's pretty normal. Sure. Kind of predictable. Um, I want to talk about inflation because this is important. Okay. Um, we, and I want to talk about it in a, in a way that I'm just telling you, don't be afraid of what might be or what might not be, but also don't try to like, you know, bet, don't, don't put a Vegas bet on the next rate cut because we just don't know. So, so historically right. speaking, historically speaking, um, if we go and look for a very, very long history of the United States, when it comes to inflation coming up, almost every time almost almost so significantly more than most of the time but not every time let's be clear sure. um there is a second spike of inflation following the first big spike the second spike is usually not as big right but it's it's yeah. kind of like peskier because it just won't go away yeah and and so 
with that being said, I would not be surprised if we don't if we don't start hearing about things. If we don't hear the word, I think you'll hear the word stagflation a lot. Mm-hmm. I think you'll talk about a second wave or a second spike of inflation, and you'll see those things, especially when these little reports go out. And again, I'm not like I don't anticipate these terrible, terrible reports. What I anticipate is they the reports are fine. They just don't meet expectations of future predictors, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Like market, you know, masterminds or whatever. And so because these analysts have expectations and the reports aren't as expected, the market will come back a little bit, kind of like what's going on today as we record. Um, But long story short, what ends up ultimately happening in that space is, you know, as soon as the market's down 0.1%, the media is like, oh, inflation's roaring back and this and that. This so is evidence, yeah. Second spikes are not uncommon. And, and here's why I think the Federal Reserve keeps saying to us, they're telling us, they're giving us the answer. They're, say, they're literally saying, like, higher for longer, higher for longer, because mm-hmm. the Fed, generally, historically speaking, is also eager to cut. They need strong economy, higher yeah. rates slow the economy mm-hmm. so they the fed and historical aspects has been have been eager to cut once once de- inflation comes down a little bit the fed right. keeps saying hey we're not going to be eager to cut so while yeah. the second spike while the data it, they may not they may they're not going to cut right away because they don't want to have to raise rates again and that's also what historically happened so the right. federal reserve is just saying look like yeah we might get a report where inflation you know ticks up a little bit but we didn't cut so we don't have to raise so right. we don't know, like, and I'm not, I'm not saying I don't know that the Fed's going to cut. I don't know if the Fed's going to raise. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What I am yeah. saying is I'm not going to go put a bet <clears throat> on either direction because the Fed is just saying higher for longer. What they're basically saying is we are also anticipating rates to tick up or down mm-hmm. and, and, and reports to come, or sorry, reports coming <laughs> up or down. Thumbs up again. Um, but what, what they're saying is, is, we're just not going to have a knee-jerk reaction. I'm telling all listeners not to be emotional about their portfolio. The Fed's saying, hey, we're not going to be emotional here. And we're not going to jump excitedly either direction for cuts or hikes. Yeah, the last I mean, thing we're in a good spot. Right, I want to turn this over to you and let you bring this home. But the, the, the thing that jumps out to me, the analogy is, it's like, think about when you come home and it's your home is like hot, like you're hot, right? So you flip on the AC. And it mm-hmm. starts cooling down, and then what happens? Like somebody opens the door, and the, it, like, like it never. Typically, when we're trying to change something, I mean, mm-hmm. this, you're trying to change the temperature of your house. We're trying to change hyperinflation or high inflation to like more normalized inflation. When, mm-hmm. we're, when we're trying to change our environment, it hardly ever happens in a straight line. It's always like, oh, it's going the direction where we're intentionally trying to make it go, but oop, flip. Whoa, too much blip, you know. Mm-hmm. So this stuff's gonna happen. Um, I would just say I don't all of this to say the, the point that I'm trying to communicate to my clients right now is I would not be surprised, especially with an election coming up close, that we see a little bit more volatility. The headlines are gonna scream. We gotta, yeah. we gotta, you know, you gotta do something. I'm telling oh, you, yeah. this is anticipated, it's expected. And if you have the right allocations in the right places, the right resources in the right places, and the right plan in place, you can probably just sit on your hands and do nothing, take deep breaths, and enjoy your day. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think you know we did a whole episode on election years, um, we did. and so maybe we could you know link to that in the description about the volatility during election years. And again, just to drive home the point that a lot of this is normal, and and don't let the uh, the news you know dictate your day. Just sit on your hands and, and stick to the plan. And yeah, they're they're trying to you know the Fed's main avenue of messing with the economy is the interest rates and they're trying to dial it in. And and right now it does feel like inflation is staying a little bit and we're just kind of holding tight. So that's not a bad sign and it's not, a, it's not a good sign. Um, but that's okay to live in that ambiguity, especially yeah. if you have a plan. I think, uh, if you, if you can champion, if you can master the craft of slowing your heart rate down when everybody else is increasing, um, 
at, like you are going to, you're going to win nine yeah. times out of 10. If people are reacting emotionally and you can just calm down, it takes self-awareness. It takes discipline. It takes knowledge and expertise. And generally speaking, it also takes the team around you. I was, I'm, I'm just thinking like Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, getting down to the, the wire Super Bowl overtime and like how he manages to throw kind of a perfect pass into the end zone under that certain set of circumstances, how I, how I could slow his like heart rate down and just like perform through muscle memory and not be crazy out of his head. Like that's, that's a master of being in control of himself, even through any environment. I think when it comes yeah. to our finances in general, we're talking about the markets, but this is anything spending and you know, everything setting boundaries setting appropriate boundaries for ourselves, but also just being in control and taking breaths and knowing when we need to call someone to bring in and be like, Hey, I'm, I feel like I'm losing control a little bit, but that's yeah, all I, I mean, got. Even you got anything else? Patrick Mahomes, you know, still has a coach who called that play and, you yeah. know, he didn't go oh, down no, there and just absolutely. do whatever he wanted. He stuck to the plan and, you know, kept his cool. So yeah, yeah that's uh, I think football is a great analogy for a lot of things. I think we should, we should incorporate it more often. Um, mm. but yeah, guys, uh, follow us on, you know, subscribe to us on YouTube, click that like button, uh, comment, um, follow us anywhere you get podcasts from or on, you know, Spotify, uh, and everywhere else. If you want to contact us and either ask questions for the show, um, or get some advice on something, our emails, uh, will be down in the description, but also harpethwealthpartners.com. Um, and we will, uh, if, if nothing else, we'll see you all next week, Brandon. That's it, man. You guys said it, or you said it well. Um, we appreciate all of you guys. Hope this was helpful and hope all the episodes are helpful. See you soon. Adios. We hope you learned something valuable today. We appreciate you including us in your journey towards financial betterment. It is important to us that you know this is for educational purposes only and not to be considered specific advice for any individual listener. If something we discussed is relevant to you, and you have questions about how it might be uniquely applicable to you, please discuss that with a financial professional or, of course, we are happy to have further conversations with you about your specific questions, needs, or circumstances. We welcome you to reach out to us via our website, harpethwealthpartners.com or by emailing brandon at bmc at harpethwealthpartners.com. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice is offered through Private Advisor Group, a registered investment advisor. Private Advisor Group and Harpeth Wealth Partners are separate entities from LPL Financial. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not to be intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult appropriate qualified professionals prior to making a decision. Investing includes risk, including fluctuating prices and loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Hypothetical examples presented are not representative of any specific investments. Your results may vary. We want to thank you for your time and we look forward to having you back next week.